What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another edition of Logician Tim Learns. This is where you get to watch me go from a total gaming newbie to a, uh, well, a more informed gaming newbie. Hey, what is up, David, Jared, and Scott? Is my microphone sounding okay? Because I had some, like, tweaking earlier, and I want to make sure I don't sound like I'm, like, underwater or speaking, like, in a crazy voice or something like that. So if you you can hear me okay, just hit me with a, a thumbs up. Just tell me in the, in the chat down there if I sound okay to you. If not, I might have to uh, start the screen over. Uh, really quick. So what is up, Joe? Good to see you, my dude. Over on uh, over on YouTube. Good to see you, man. So everything sound okay, though? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. And there's there's like a delay. So when I ask, like it takes like 20 seconds for you to reply. So hopefully everything looks good. So um, we are, we're starting a new book tonight. So, okay, good. Thank you, Scott. Scott says I sound great. We're starting a new book tonight, a new RPG. And it is Judge Dredd. Thanks, Joe. Uh, it is Judge Dredd and the world of 2000 AD. And this was a Kickstarter, actually just September of last year. I wanted to bring it up and show it to you real quick. Uh, this is the one that we're going to be going over this week. So let's pull this up real quick. Here is their Kickstarter from back in September of last year, not very long ago. So they obviously had everything pretty much ready to go and, um, and sent it out to print right away. So... They did 2,004 backers, and they pledged 150,000 pounds, which equates to almost 200,000 U.S. dollars. So, I mean, they did they did pretty darn good. Um, and they delivered right away, because this book just came in not too long ago. Scott actually bought the uh, Kickstarter and uh, lent it to me to review. So, thank you, Scott. Um, so, yeah, you can see they did, they did pretty good. The core rule book, the one that I got here, the full color hardcover rule book and the PDF was 35 pounds and that equals about 45 bucks or so. So less than $50. You can get the hardcover on, um, through the Kickstarter. Now, when I went to look for it online, I couldn't find it anywhere. Now, if, if I went to their website, all I could find was, um, a link to another site. That's basically just like uh drive through RPG, um, RPG net. I think it was, um, but basically they're the same price. They didn't have the hardcover. All they had was the PDF on both sites, uh, sites listed for $19.99 for 20 bucks. So if you're gonna, if you want the hardcover, you're going to have to wait for right now. I think I didn't see anywhere else you could get it, uh, other than just through the Kickstarter that is already closed, but I'm sure they're going to be doing more of them soon. Uh, but if you want to get the PDF, you can grab it on drive through RPG, just type in judge dread and it's going to come up. Um, there's a bunch of stuff actually comes up when you type up Judge Dredd, but just kind of look for this cover uh, that I have here. So, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's pretty, pretty cool so far. Um, it's, it's eight and a half by 11. So I like that. It, it seems really thin, but it's 200 and what, 40, how many pages did I say? 265 pages, but it doesn't really feel like it. Like, uh, and maybe it's just because I've been, like I had the the Numenera books, which were like 400 pages, over 400 pages, and the De Genesis books, which were like 370 or something like that. So I think just with those very large books that I've been reading the last uh, I don't know couple months, then this one just feels thin. But it's it's not. It's 265 pages. So, uh, but yeah, if you take 45 dollars, you divide it by the uh, 265 pages, that comes out to just under uh, 17 cents a page. So 16.9 cents per page. So uh, a little bit on the little bit higher side of things when you start looking at per page costs, but you know, it's, that's all just per page, right? That's just paper. Scott. All right, man. Uh, I'll, I'll see you later, my man. Uh, going to eat some dinner. We'll see you, dude. But um, so yeah, it's, it's not too far off in line with, with other books that we've, we've covered. 17 cents is not bad at all. Now, when we start flipping through the book, it definitely has like a it has an old school vibe to it. Um, the fonts, the art, um, it, it, kind of like the layout. It has like a really old school vibe, like from like 1970s or 80s. Uh, there, there's like a ton of different art styles kind of going on. And I'm really not sure what to make of it. Like the, the art style is very, like very, like really wildly. Some of it is really well done. Some of it, not so much. And so I'm not really sure what to think, but it's definitely old school. Definitely old school. Reminds you of some of these, the really, really old comics, at least some of the art in here. And maybe some of the art is from the comics because I was not, 
Uh, I have not read the comics, but some of it is really updated. Like some of this art is very uh, new looking, and then some of it is is you know very old and very nostalgic looking. So I don't know. I'll let you guys decide, but um, and maybe I'll grab the PDF from Scott and on Wednesday and let you guys kind of see some of this art so I can uh, slap it up on screen for you. But yeah, some of it just looks like I'm not sure what they were going for here. The art is just kind of, eh, right? So anyways, I want to, um, Joe says, didn't know this existed. I'll have to look for this. I was a Dread fan back in the day. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, just kind of know that it's starting off, it's, it's very nostalgic. Um, it's very... Um, uh, it's very old school, you know, it's got like this comics, comic book style vibe to it. Right. And, um, and I know Judge Dredd is, is an old, you know, IP and they actually give us some of that in, in the beginning of the book. So let's kind of start from the beginning, shall we? And when we just first opened the page, they give us this really cool piece of Judge Dredd art. And this just looks awesome to me. I like that. I mean, I would have that like as a poster hanging up back there. I mean, it, that looks awesome. And you flip the page and um, you can sell it, tell it's done, it's done by W-O-I-N, which is uh, What's Old is New. They have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, so you can look them up on Facebook. Just type in W-O-I-N, and uh, it'll come up. And then you have your table of contents here. Um, and then we kind of just jump right into the introduction. And they tell us a little bit of history about the comics. And where the comics, the, the 2080 comics started way back in 1977. Okay. 1977. I was born in 75. So, uh, it's, it's almost as old as me, right? That's, and that's pretty darn old, I'd say. Um, but it started off with like this an anthology of like really brutal stories with like these really flawed characters, um, in deadly worlds. And that's kind of their thing, right? It's just kind of like flawed characters in these very deadly worlds and uh, just brutal stories, right? But one of the stories that, that they did was Judge Dredd, who enforced the laws of this Mega City One. That's the name of it, Mega City One. Uh, with this game system, they say that you can play uh, you know, mutant bounty hunters, gen genetically engineered soldiers fighting in the future, warped barbarians searching for plunder, or grim athletes fighting in blood-drenched arenas for your freedom. So you can play it like as a whole lot of stuff, right? Uh, so there's a lot of worlds for you to play with in the 2000 AD um, genre or IP, I guess you want to call it. You know, this book focuses mainly on Judge Dredd. And speaking of Dredd, they kind of they, they give us a little bit of backstory on Judge Dredd, which I'm glad they did. Like, I've only seen the, the movie. And wasn't that Judge Dredd movie with Sylvester Stallone, uh, Wesley Snipes way back in the day? Like, I saw that movie. And it was pretty awesome, honestly. I, I really digged it. Um Hopefully that's the right one. I'm not making an ass of myself, but, um, you know, and that's really all I know of Judge Dredd. I'm not a big comic book reader or uh, graphic novel, novel reader at all. So, you know, I didn't know any, you know, much else about this IP other than that. So I like it when they kind of tell me some backstory and don't just assume that I know everything there's to know about it. Like I'm a huge fan, right? Uh, because not, not everybody is. And I think some people will just go, oh yeah, Judge Dredd. I kind of remember that. I want to grab it. And they want to learn what they can learn from, you know, the RPG. And I think it should stand on its own, right? Uh, so they kind of tell us a little bit that it's now the year 2099. And the world has changed, like, after, like, uh, much of the world basically was destroyed in this global war, right? And most of the planet is a radioactive wasteland. And which, of you know, most of it's in, uninhabitable and because of this radiation and all these mutants that are running around. And uh, the mutants kind of live out in the, in the wasteland. So now most of the citizens, they live in these huge, and I say huge, mega cities, which take up enormous, enormous stretches of land. And uh, uh, there are three basic, or there are three mega cities in the United States now. There's Mega City 1, Mega City 2, wow, and Texas City, all right? So three mega cities. And what they call the most important mega city which is kind of like the primary setting for the Judge Dredd stories is Mega City One, and it spreads the this one city spreads the entire eastern seaboard of the United States from New England all the way down to Florida, and it has a population upwards of 800 million. So one city uh, from New England to Florida, 800 million people. Holy crap! So. 
And it tells us that most of the mega, mega city one, it consists of city blocks. So the way I kind of envision it is almost like New York all the way up and down the coast. It's just like one giant New York city, right? Uh, there's these enormous skyscrapers, which house up to 50,000 citizens each, right? Uh, because, because of like these sapient robots, uh, many people are unemployed. And with that many people crammed into such a relatively small footprint, uh, it's really a dangerous and unruly place. So uh, there aren't, uh, so the city's like super, super large, right? And they're, they're, it's just full of, packed full of people, right? Enforcing the law is super difficult for you know, just normal cop, cops. So the city employs a special law enforcement called the judges to patrol the city and police the streets. And these judges just kind of look badass. You can see their pictures in here. They look awesome. We can always tell from their uniforms, their helmets, and um, they just look awesome, right? And these are not regular cops at all. Judges have complete power and authority to enforce the law basically in any way that they seem fit. Uh, they can arrest, they can convict, and sentence a criminal, uh, criminal right on the spot, even including an up to executions when necessary, right? So these, you don't want to mess with these guys, right? Because they, it says that they evoke fear, respect, and hatred from the citizens that they protect. And I would guess so, right? They're kind of heavy handed uh, judge, jury, and executioner, right? And so, yeah, you definitely, it's not somebody that you would want to uh, want to mess with at all. Now, uh, the, the most so it kind of tells us a little bit about them. Their their judges are very well equipped with what they call the lawgiver pistols. Okay, so the name of the pistol is called lawgiver. I like that. It's pretty badass. Uh, and the, these pistols can fire up to six different types of ammunition. And they have these uh, motorcycles that they call the lawmaster, the lawmaster motorcycles. And these motorcycles are armed to the teeth, basically with tons of different weapons and this like autopilot AI feature. Uh, that they can like can take over and start driving for the judge. Like if he's too busy messing with somebody or doing something else, he can just kind of push a button and it takes over. It's pretty cool. Um, now, the most feared and respected judge of all in, in Mega, One, uh, Mega City 1 is, of course, Judge Dredd. And he's like relentlessly severe, right? He's humorless. You, you don't joke around him. He utterly He's utterly committed to uh, punishing these lawbreakers and keeping the peace, right? Well, over the years, he's brought justice to some of the most notorious criminals who have terrorized the city. He almost always gets his perp, but he's the one man, uh, he's he's only one man, and the city is in constant un unrest and upheaval. And this is, you know, there's always need for fresh blood, right? Fresh recruits to come in and help out. And this is kind of where the story includes you, okay? And it, it, it kind of ends with this quote, it says, Take up your law, take up your lawgivers, and bring law to the city. You might die, as many have before you, but you might also make a name for yourself, one worthy to stand along the dreads. So, uh, yeah, you're gonna be able to play as a judge if you want to, and play right along Judge Dread, or you can kind of go through recruits. It's really, it sounds like it really leaves it open for you to play however you want to. So it's kind of neat. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the backstory a little bit there. And then we kind of go forward into the book a little bit and it tells us what you're going to need. So Judge Dread is a D6 system. And so you're going to need several D6 dice. And that's all it says, several. Uh, they don't really say how many several is, but I would go ahead and get like, get a dozen, get like 12 D6 dice, have those laying around, right? Uh, your character sheets are found in the back of the book. And you can also download them from the website as well. So um, I did kind of take a peek at these. And they look, they look pretty cool. Uh, they also have, which we're going to be getting into in the character creation section, but they also have some characters already made up for you. So if you don't feel like, you know, rolling up a character, then they have several already made up for you that you can just choose from and start playing a lot faster. So I thought that was kind of a nice touch. What is this one? Yeah, so they have, they have several of them in here that you can just, you can just choose from if you want to. And this is kind of cool. They have... Um, like along with the table of contents, they kind of added these little, little like little comic strip, you know, things or whatever. But they, it kind of tells us a little bit about each chapter, what to expect. So, um, what's one of these? Let's see, like equipment and vehicles. Um, and so it tells us a little bit about that chapter. It says you want guns, motorcycles, and other gear. 
you need you need look no further than this meaty chapter for it offers you everything it offers you everything you need to survive the mean streets of Mega City One. It includes a variety of items that perps or citizens can use, along with details of the special equipment issued to judges. Okay, so each one of these has this kind of little flavor. I like that. I like that they add a little bit of flavor to each chapter, and I can quickly look at that and see what's going on. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, and then you turn the page, and it's like, am I reading a comic book? No. What is this? This is actually an example of play. And I've seen this a few times, and I really, I gotta say, I enjoy this when a book throws this, this in here. They give us this example of play, um, like kind of like how a scene plays out in the game, almost like in a, um, in a, in a play type fashion, right? Uh, where they kind of have the GM says this, and then Sandra says this, and then Kelly says this, or whatever. And it kind of just goes through and narrates this the way the game would actually be played. And I really like it that they dig that they do this because it gives us, you know, kind of a, a tone for the game, and uh, you know, kind of the flow as well, and a little bit of, about what to expect. You know, what types of things can I expect when I when I'm playing? So I really like that they did this, and they did it. What's what's super cool to me is they did it in a comic book style, where you know it kind of has these panels and all the art, and then you can see all the words here with the GM talking and then the characters talking. So it's not like the last one I looked at was Numenera, and it just had, you know, GM says this, player one says this, player two says this, GM says that. And I thought that was really cool until I saw this. And I really dig this comic book style because it just adds more flavor and gets my emotion, my emotion, my imagination just going right from the get go. And so I can really see how a scene would play out. Uh, especially with the art here. So I think they just did a really fantastic job. So you can just read through this, like I think it's four, uh, three and a half pages, two and a half pages of, uh, of example of how the, the game plays. And then they, they go over kind of a brief glossary and nothing in here really stuck out like as, oh, wow, we really need to know that. Like it's the basic stuff. What's a dice pool? What's a experience points? You know, so on and so forth. Um, and then they go into uh, the world of the world's, of 2000 AD. And so all of these are not included in this book. Okay. This book is the judge dread book, but what this sounds like is there are a bunch of worlds in 2000 AD that you can use this mechanic system to explore and play in. And it sounds like that they are going to be coming out with books for each one of these. So they include like the ABC warriors, uh, Absalom, ACE trucking company, which sounded really fun. Uh, Kabbalistics Inc. Defoe, uh, Doctor and Quench, Flesh sounds awesome. Uh, let me tell you what Flesh is. If you, you don't know what this is, this is really cool. Flesh is uh, this world where in the future, uh, the population of Earth has like skyrocketed, and um, you know humanity just can't keep up or, or like with with food production, right? And so with especially meat is super rare. And so they figure out a way to like go back in time and create this portal to uh, when the dinosaurs roamed. And so it's these people's jobs to kind of go through this portal with their spaceships and badass stuff. You can see a picture down here and kill dinosaurs with them and then take the meat back to their own time. And that just sounds so awesome to me. Um, so, yeah, if that book comes out, I'm probably grabbing that one. But they have a whole ton of these that it sounds like if you're familiar with the setting, you could easily... Uh, adapt this mechanic system to any of these worlds if you wanted to, but it sounds like they're going to be coming out with some of these books uh, that are just specific to these, to these worlds. And that just sounds awesome to me. Uh, they have Indigo Prime, Necronauts, Nemesis, the Warlock, Nikolai Dante, the Red Seas, Robo Hunter. Uh, I mean, it goes on Rogue Trooper, Sinister Dexter, uh, Strontium Dog, Slain, the Ballad of ha Halo Jones, the VCs, the VCS. So, Tons and tons and tons of worlds. So I would look for what's old is new, W O I N, to be putting out these books like crazy. They have tons. What's that? How many is that? It's what, like 15 books at least? 10, 15, 20 even books that they'll probably be releasing in the coming years of this 2000 AD world. So if you like this universe, there's going to be tons and tons of content for you. So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's about it. That's all they give us. And then we finally get to the character creation section, which is something I'm going to save for Wednesday because it is a, it's a really hefty section uh, as far as character creation goes. How many pages is this? Um, 
Yeah, so that's like, what, 60 pages or so of character creation that I have to kind of read through, break it down for you guys, and uh, let you know what's all involved. And again, you're going to be able to um, to use your own, uh, create your own character, like your own custom character, or you can choose from theirs as well in the book. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to this one. I think it looks cool. Um, some of the art's a little bit confusing to me. Uh, don't know that much about the world uh, other than what the you know, couple paragraphs that they gave me. I'm hoping kind of as I read, things become a little bit more clear to me, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, anyways, that's about it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, if you did, please hit me up with a like button. Uh, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you're on Twitch, hit that little heart button at the top. Hit me with a like on Facebook. Appreciate you guys. If you have any comments or suggestions, whatever, throw them down into the comment section. I'm always sure to check those and get back to you right there. But anyways, that's it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you all on Wednesday with some character creation and Judge Dredd. All right, bye.